Hello there. If you like truth, you'll like it here. Welcome. Dear Real Housewives of Atlanta and Married to Medicine cast of women, why are professional and otherwise educated women willing to act a whole fool for a few extra dollars? Full disclosure, back in the day, there was this show called Emily Owens, MD, that I used to love. It came out in 2012. I don't know what about that show made me take to it like I did, but I did. And I would tune in weekly like I was showing up for a job. That is, of course, until it was canceled. But needless to say, when a year later, I heard of a show called Married to Medicine that was premiering, I was ecstatic. Now I would get to delve back into a medically based show, but one created in reality with black professional doctors representing themselves, their communities, and their professions well. I was in. When the show started, I remembered it appeared to be less about the cast's professional endeavors and more about various people going to lunch to talk about each other. I thought, well, okay, this is a TV show, so of course they're going to have a little bit of drama, but it will just be here and there as the focus will be on these educated and professional people showing their lives and their professional responsibilities. If any show was going to demonstrate success and showcase successful people, it would be one focused around medical professionals. I was convinced this would be a respectable show because surely the cast would have too much to lose to get on TV and act a fool. Surely they would care too much about their reputations to get on TV and show their behinds. Surely they would have gone to school too long to risk their professional reputations on the usual TV BS and nonsense. I mean, as medical doctors, they would already be making good money, so surely they wouldn't sell their souls just for a few extra dollars, right? Nope, not right. I was wrong. Boy, oh boy, was I wrong. The answer was nope, no ma'am. This would not be a respectable show. There would be name calling and a medical professional actually fixing her mouth to tell somebody, yo mama, whenever she disagreed with them. And that would only be the beginning. This same woman animal would continue wrapping her lips around her teeth as they sat in her gums, calling grown women and men too, some of the vilest names one could think of. And she would do it as a mother of three a married woman, and a business owner. And nope, apparently there wasn't too much to lose to get on TV and act a fool because there would be fighting, in ball gowns no less, by women with enough of a net worth to individually fund a small charity. Yet, instead of philanthropy or some other community good, these women would get out and throw hands like a couple of backyard barroom brawlers. And nope, they wouldn't care about their reputation more than the extra coins thrown to them here and there because they would not only sell their soul for these coins, but their integrity too, as they did whatever it took to stay employed and on a show that demanded they be as ghetto as they could get away with instead of highlighting them as the creme de la creme they should have demanded they be treated as. And those were the medical doctors. The foolishness continued on the show called Real Housewives of Atlanta, which featured few actual housewives. At any given time, there were women renting men, allegedly sharing men, borrowing co-workers as men before having to return them back to Nigeria, and generally being anything other than a housewife, real or imagined. Real Housewives of Atlanta was just as raggedy as the first show, Married to Medicine, with their only demonstration of black excellence being the women's ability to dress nicely as they went out to lunch to talk about each other behind their respective backs. And my question is why? How much money is enough money to shame and embarrass yourself and your family and your community and your children? Is their doctor's salaries insufficient? Because they seem willing to don a clown suit and shuck and jive for whatever is in that paycheck. And they compete for the chance to do so. They actually wait with bated breath, to see if their contracts will be renewed so they can continue to act a fool, shame themselves, reveal whatever they must, 
dog each other out and otherwise secondhand embarrass all around them to be awarded a peach or an apple or a fig or a turtleneck or whatever token they're given to persuade them to continue lessening themselves. So they can sit on a couch at the end of a season and make the only one with any sense among them richer. Andy Cohen is getting fat off the hog, off their broken marriages and broken friendships and broken value systems that would prioritize dollars over common sense. He sits on that sofa eating brownies as they argue like sad women instead of the accomplished phenoms they should be regarded as. He stands over them, waving that coveted contract, seeing how far they're willing to go, how low, and then how much lower still, to get their annual peach, or apple, or two liter of Sprite, or whatever token he is offering to make them disregard their dignity for yet another season of showing their whole behind to whomever's willing to watch. Whatever happened to professional integrity? There used to be a time our black medical professionals were held in high esteem. Our young men and women looked to them as the beacons of light for the next generation, as proof that we have what it takes and can rise to the top with the best of them. Now we look at them as proof that an education doesn't equal class or sophistication. Heck, a medical degree from someone who looks like you doesn't even mean you're going to get quality medical care. Because, after all, according to Dr. Jackie, who are you to be in pain and need accommodation as you bring a life into the world? Get out there and work and slave, woman. Get! Why are these women willing to belittle themselves so, season after season, just for the opportunity to come back and do it again? What's the reward? We can't say it's for a career because they already have that. We can't say it's to make a better life for themselves and their family because they're already medical professionals. So one can assume they at least make decent money. We can't say it's for community advocacy because there are other ways to advocate for the community outside of embarrassing it. Plus, last I heard, them going to lunch to gossip about one another doesn't elevate us. It puts us on the same footing as a couple of fourth grade girls. So what is it? I wish I could whisper to each of them that they are the talent. You are the talent. You are the talent. They are the reason the show exists. They are sitting around auditioning and being on their best behavior to get a contract for a camera crew to follow them around as they engage in foolishness when they could just as easily get a camera crew to follow them around to showcase them excelling in their careers and professional endeavors to show them practicing dentistry or obstetrics or emergency medicine, you know, being great. But no, they'd rather wait to see if they'll be selected for another round of How Low Can You Go? Values Edition. This is not about race, but why they think they need a white man sitting on the sofa waiting to direct and discuss their foolishness and nonsense is beyond me. Do they know they're making him rich? richer than themselves, in fact. And he doesn't have to show not one butt cheek, let alone his full behind, for the privilege. Why don't they see this? Why don't they know this? And again, it isn't about race, because whether the overseer on the couch was black, white, or iridescent, I'd still have a problem with a bunch of women acting like show ponies, waiting to be picked up to perform for the benefit of making someone else rich and themselves look stupid and low class. Some won't know better. Through absolutely no fault of their own, some won't know better. But I would expect that these women would. I would expect that these women would know that they hold the power, since it is their lives that are up for public consumption. So why don't they take the will and steer their own ship? If they wanted to, they could reorient this show into one that makes themselves and their communities proud. They could fire Andy and hire themselves and create a show that shows the world we aren't all for sale and willing to act like they already think we act just for a few dollars. You've got people like Nini with unmistakable presence doing everything she can to cozy back up to Andy Cohen even after acknowledging how she was mistreated by him and his show. Doesn't she know she could do this without him? You've got people like Mariah Huck, 
who was the brains behind the whole operation, being flicked away like a piece of lint, without barely a loud whisper in return. Why hasn't she built, and this time held on to, the next multi-million dollar enterprise? I wish the women of Married to Medicine and Real Housewives of Atlanta got smart and realized they are the talent and as such hold the power. Then I wish they'd use that power to stop looking so desperate and pick back up their crowns because they fell as the women were bending over to show the world their behinds. All right, y'all, that's it and that's all. Hello there. If you like truth, you'll like it here. Welcome. If you don't, or if you believe in groupthink, or bullying others into believing the popular opinion, then this isn't the place for you. So go ahead and just cancel me now. On this channel, we don't discuss my truth or your truth. We discuss the truth, and no topic is off limits. So log in, like, subscribe, Get comfy and comment. It's nice to have you here. So let's talk.